today we say hola to our new amiga, find out what's going on, as I hereby invite everyone to join me on my adventures through Marvel Snap. Hey everybody, it's Annabelle. So we got a new card for our character spotlight this week, and that is Arana. Arana is a teenager from Brooklyn who lived in Mexico when she was young, but returned to the United States after her mother was killed. On her first day of high school, she saw her friend being bullied, so she got into a fight. It was broken up, but the two agreed to resume the battle that night at a bridge in a nearby park. However, when she got there, she saw a stranger being attacked by a group that were attempting to kill him. She leapt into the killing blow. Luckily, the site was a sacred spot, and the man was a sorcerer in the Spider Society. Aranya was very close to death, so the mage performed a ritual on her and transformed some of his power into her in order to save her life. The wound became a spider-shaped metallic tattoo that also endowed her with spider powers. Life seemingly returned to normal, however the Spider Society soon approached her asking to help her in fighting crime. Despite several members of the society being annoyed with this choice, after a few fights they found out why she was brought on. Aranya's favorite gadgets are discs attached to cords that are about the size of her palm and look like spiders, each one having five red legs that are able to grip any object. As part of her powers, she can activate a blue exoskeleton that she can control the thickness, coverage, and shape of the exoskeleton. At its thickness, it is resilient to small firearms. However, when using the full armor, Contact with water leaves her unable to breathe, forcing her to retract it. Arana takes her codename from the word spider in Spanish, as she is fluent in both Spanish and English. She has the typical spider persona. She has quick whips and complains. She has also younger free-spirited and dynamic, which colors the kind of humor she likes to employ. However, this young hero will never back down from a fight, and with her armor and her superhuman strength, she has the power to protect people while keeping her grades up. Aranya has the typical spider powers that include superhuman strength, speed, stamina, agility, reflexes, and wall crawling. She also can activate a blue exoskeleton that expands to block attacks even when she is un unaware of. Unlike Spider-Man, she has the ability to organically produce her own silk webbing from glands within her forearms. She is also able to hide in shadows and go completely undetected by people. She is a skilled mechanic, designer, and a pretty decent hacker. Arana is a teenager from Brooklyn who saw a stranger being attacked and was rewarded with the ability to activate an exoskeleton and spider powers. This is represented in Marvel Snap as once per game she can activate her powers to give help to somebody by protecting them then swinging them over to a new location. In Marvel Snap she is a one power, one cost card that has the new ability of activate that will give the next cards you play plus two power and move it one location to the right if possible. In my opinion, she is about a three star. Now, let me explain why she, I am giving her a three star because a lot of people have gone pretty off the deep end on her and I can see why. Now, first of all, we have to talk about the fact that I kind of underestimated, overestimated, kind of didn't understand to a certain degree just how interesting effect cards were going to be. 
having that ability to choose the turn that you have your power go off is very interesting. It's very unique. It's very powerful. So at the baseline, she is an Iron Fist combined with a Forge. And that's what makes her kind of interesting. Because if the, all you need is the Iron Fist, she's at least the second Iron Fist in your deck. If all you need is an Iron Fist. One less power than Iron Fist, but she gets the ability to choose what turn it happens. It gives plus two power to it. And fortunately, it goes the opposite way of Iron Fist and to a certain degree also Heimdall. If for some reason you need the Forge. This is also a Forge. So it's one less power than a Forge, one less cost than a Forge. But you have, again, the ability to use it, and then you also get the move effect. So even on the worst day, you can at least put this in the, the third location, which is usually the location that I can't move out of, and at least give it plus two power. And there's a lot to be said about having that plus two power. That's what kind of got me on Symbiote Spider-Man, is I didn't realize that he could basically just act as an armor, or I should say a Hulkbuster, on, on the worst of locations, on the worst of situations. Speaking of Hulkbuster, Hulkbuster's an awesome card for this. When you have any move card, you can basically play this card on one. You can play the Iron on one. And then any time during the game, if you have a move card at all, you're giving that card plus two and you're moving it. So you can even play down the cards ahead of time. Give it the plus two and then move it with the Hulkbuster because the Hulkbuster gave it the plus two and then move it. Which is really good with the main card that everybody's thinking about with this, which is just the Human Torch. Now, even without the Hulkbuster, if all you do is just Arana, Human Torch. Human Torch is getting the plus two from the Arana. So it's becoming a 1-4 just to begin with. And then it's moving at least one, assuming you have the location open, and it's becoming a 1-8. Two cards to get 1-8 worth of power is nothing to sneeze about. One of the things it's good with is, of course, anything that blocks up a lane, anything that locks up a lane, storm lanes, uh, death domain, sanctum centurum, all the normal move locations. One of the things it's bad at is, un unfortunately, debris and clog decks. In order to move cards, you need space for cards. The more cards that are not yours on your side of the field, the, the less likely you'll be able to move anything. Another big one that we always have to talk about every time we talk about a one drop is Killmonger. Skillmonger, Crymonger. Because it is a one drop, you have to activate the ability before Killmonger comes out. Otherwise, Killmonger will kill it, obviously. And if it is dead, well, you can't activate the ability. Uh, another good card that this is good with is, of course, the Brood. If you play down the Brood, the Brood automatically gets the plus two. You can set this up so you can do the Brood and you can do the Forge on top of this. So basically you play her on one, you play the Arana on one, you play the Forge on two, and then you tap the Arana, activate the Arana, and then play down the Brood, which means that the Brood already got plus two plus four, which means that each one is a 3-6, so that's 6, 12, 18 power on turn 3. Another card that we gotta look at every time we look at move cards is things that only can move into one location. The problem when you have anything that can only move into one location, whether it's right, whether it's left, whether it's middle, 
is if your location three, which is your rightmost location, is something that you wanted to go into, that's great. If it's not, well, that's an issue. The same thing happens when your first location is something that you can't play into. You only have one location to play stuff into. So let's say you start off with Sanctum Centurum. There's no way that you're getting a card into the Sanctum Centurum with just Arana. This is why Madam Web is a lot more interesting to card in this particular situation. Another card to look at in the same vein is Giganto. Because again, with Giganto, even though it's a powerful card, one of the reasons that nobody plays Giganto, or very few people play Giganto, even though it's a 614 and should see play, is the restriction that you have that you have to play in the right location. So, if your third location is clogged, and you only can play into the second location for some reason, then Aran is only doing what Forge would normally do. Now, is that the end of the world? No. But is it what you're hoping the card can do? Who knows? There's actually a weird pseudo um, Galactus deck that I came up with for this. Where you play down the Arana on turn one, you play whatever you want on two, it doesn't even matter. And then on three, you play whatever you want also, if you need to. But then on four, you actually play down the Shuri. And then you activate the Arana before you play down the Shuri. So the Shuri will come down. So this is the actual move. Let me do it again. Turn one, you play Arana. Turn two, you play whatever you want or skip the turn. Turn three, you might need to do a location manipulation. That's fine. If not, skip the turn. Doesn't matter. Turn four, you play down Symbiote Spider. Turn five, you play down Shuri on top of the Symbiote Spider. But then you use the Arana to kick it out of the location. Then, on the last turn, you can play down the Galactus, which will get the Shuri buff. And then we'll also get the Symbiote Spider-Man buff. There's probably some stuff you can do that will be more interesting along the way. I just thought of that as kind of a neat little Galactus play. So, other than our runner today, we have Sage. Sage is one of those cards that keeps putting up points, keeps doing stuff that she's meant to do, keeps being a big thing, but the problem that Sage is sort of getting into is double fold. First of all, locations are getting tighter with Sage, and Sage needs a lot of cards to uh, get her power off of. Secondly, if People aren't playing a lot of cards if they're going the opposite way. If they're only playing three, four cards, which sometimes all you need to do is play three, four cards. If you play Symbiote, Spider-Man, uh, Black Panther, and Arkham Zola, you're going to win a game. And Sage is going to do nothing about that, really. So in order for Sage to work, you, your opponent needs to have a lot of stuff on, the, on their field, or you need to clog them up with stuff on their field. Miss Marvel, uh, for some reason, and I don't know why, Miss Marvel just has taken a nosedive. She shouldn't see as little play as she's seen. She sh should still be a decently good card. But this is part of the problem that I talked about with, with cards that have to have a location. Miss Marvel, basically, to get the most out of her, has to go in the middle. And if your middle's messed up for whatever reason, then Miss Marvel's not really giving you that power spike. 
there's not a bad card this week. If you're missing all three, nothing's bad. But here's one of my problems for Rana, and this is just me going on a little bit of a tangent. There are so many situations where I'm looking at a Rana in a deck and saying you could easily replace it with just Iron Fist. And when a card costs you 6,000 tokens to be a second Iron Fist, to be a second Forge, and to be, it's, it's just kind of ugly and nasty. This is one of the few times where I wish we had Series 3 cards again, Series series 4 cards that, that were released as Series 4. This is almost a card that should have just come out, period. It's a fun card, it's an interesting card, it'll probably be an impactful card. But when a lot of times you're looking at Iron Fist and you're going, this is just a backwards Iron Fist. Why do I want to spend 6,000 tokens on a card that I get for free? So, this might be one of the ones that you just see if it comes around again. So, I wouldn't necessarily be upset about getting Arana, but I wouldn't be jumping up and down for Arana. Let's see what we get this week, though. Let's find out what's in our box. Box is... Sasquatch. Interesting. Never done a video on Sasquatch before. We'll be doing a video on Sasquatch this Friday. So if you want to come watch me on Friday, try out Sasquatch. Feel free to. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And remember, play for fun.